the third example or the next example I want to talk about in terms of dynamic programming is the longest increasing subsequence problem. The longest increasing increasing subsequence problem. Okay? Or LIS. It is actually similar to the weighted compatible intervals in some sense. Both of them are, we are dealing with an array of information and we try to maximize something about subarrays there. Okay, so what is the, how is this problem uh, defined? So we have the input, an array of integers. Okay, an array of n integers indexed from 0 to n minus 1. Output is the longest sequence of indices longest sequence of indices in of this array of indices i1 i2 all the way to ik such that aij is smaller than or equal or if we think about them as disjoint here of a i j plus one okay for every j so what is this saying here is that if i give you an array of n elements or n numbers i want you to find me indices of in this array such that the elements on this in these indices are in an increasing order okay so the first is smaller than the second smaller than the third now notice that they don't have to be contiguous okay i1 smaller than i2, i2 smaller than i3, but I'm not saying i2 has to be i1 plus 1, okay? So just as an example, if I have, let's say, if a is the array that has, let's say, 4, uh, 8, 10, and uh, 9, and we ask what is the longest increasing subsequence here, the longest increasing subsequence is this element, this element, and this element, for example. Okay, so this would be 0, 1, 2. So this is the solution would be. But another solution that comes from here, 4, 8, 10, 9, is also this, this, and this. Okay, so here I want you to see that the solution, the, the indices in the solution do not have to be contiguous. Okay, and sometimes, you know, it could be, I can make it a bit more interesting if the array is was 4, 8, 2, 9, then there's only one solution now. It is 4, 8, and 9. Okay, so this is the, the longest increasing subsequence problem. Now, you can think about it in a greedy fashion, and I leave that up to you. You will see that greedy algorithms are not going to work, and now we want to reason about this problem recursively okay and i want to do similar reasoning to the solution that we saw for the weighted compatible intervals okay so this is the array here this is our array and this is the element at at index 0 1 all the way to n minus 1 and let me look at focus on one specific element this element here okay so i want to focus on a of 0 and i want to ask the same question that I asked before in the case of the weighted compatible intervals. I, am, I will ask, is A0 part of the solution? What does it mean to be part of the solution? It means that a longest increase, A longest increasing subsequence includes that index 0. Okay. Now, this question is a yes-no question. So we can have either yes or no. Right? If A0, if A0 is part of the solution, then we have to take, then we take A0 plus solution to the problem, solution on A from 1 to N minus 1, okay? So think about that. If, it, if A0 is part of the solution, then we need this index A0, or I can actually, if I'm focusing just on the indices, I'm saying, okay, I have the index 0 this index 0 here, plus the solution on 
I'm I, I stuck with the, with the index zero. Now let me see what else I can take from one to n minus one, and this is the recursive call. If if zero is not part of the solution, then all I need to say okay, ignore index zero, and now look for a solution on a from one to n minus one. Okay. So this is, again, the same question we asked before. When we looked at an interval j, we said, is j, is this interval j part of the solution or not, right? We are asking here, is a0 or index 0 part of the solution? Is the index 0 part of a longest increasing subsequence of indices? If it is, then the solution has at least one index in it, which is 0, plus whatever else we can take now from the indices from 1 to n minus 1. If it's not, then now we need to find the indices from 1 to n minus 1 and completely ignore 0. Which one do we take? Well, you feed this into a simple function called max, and we return this as the solution, right? Max on the length. So we look at the length of a solution here, the number of indices in this solution that involves 0. We look at the number of indices in a solution that doesn't involve 0. We take the one that has more indices in it, okay? So... This is basically the, the solution here. So if I had opt of I or opt of whatever, you know, we can, suppose I call it LIS now. So LIS on this N minus one, on the, the array from N minus one. So, sorry, I cannot just have it from N minus one here. I have, so if it's from zero to N minus one, it is the maximum of the maximum of a solution, the maximum of two things, either one, which is the the number, this one is not the index, it's the number of indices that I'm involving, which is the index zero, it's part of the solution, plus the number of indices I can now include from one to n minus one, or this zero, I don't, I cannot include that that first index uh, plus LIS of one to n minus one. Okay, so here L of LIS this returns the number of indices in the solution. Okay, not the list of indices themselves, but the number of indices. Okay. So if, if zero is part of the solution, then the number of indices is one plus whatever else I can take from one to n minus one. If it is not, then it's zero plus whatever I can take from one to n minus one, okay? And this is really the recursive call here. And now I can actually write, a rec I can write a, a recursive uh, function or recursive algorithm for this. And the recursive algorithm is, you know, I can initialize I can initialize uh, things here, for example, let's, we can have, I can actually write it here. We can do the recursive longest increasing subsequence, longest increasing subsequence. And this takes a from zero to n minus one as input. Okay, and it returns this longest increasing subsequence and suppose i want to give you the long the, the longest the, the list of indices themselves and basically we say now this this function doesn't do anything but it's going to do the following it's just going to make one call return i will define now a helper function this helper function it will take minus infinity and you'll see now why the array itself and zero okay so this is really the main function but the main function is making call to this lis helper and this lis helper that takes basically k and the a the array a and integer i okay and it returns the ls it will return this one it returns the LIS of A from I to that N minus one, okay? So now we are returning the LIS from I to N minus one. And remember that we want the solution on the entire array. This is why we fed the value I to be zero. 
the value minus infinity is going to be, you'll see why it is used in this algorithm. So now we ask if i is greater than or equal to the length of a, then there's nothing here. So if the length of a is n and i is n, it means that this index is outside the array because the array is indexed from 0 to n minus 1. So here, if in this case, we return the empty list, empty list of indices else now we let the list l of indices that i want to be i have this l specific l that is going to be ls this is going to be the recursive call li's helper on k and a but i plus one so this is now going to be looking l is the solution from i plus one to n Okay, so now I haven't included i yet. Okay, so this will be computing the solution from i plus 1 all the way to the end of the array. Now, all I need to ask is that if ai, if ai is greater than k, and you will see now what's the role of this k. If ai is greater than k, then I can take this list l prime to be this index i itself plus LIS helper of AI and E and I plus one. And now if the length of this L prime is better than L itself, I return, I make L L prime and the end I return L here okay and I will explain what's happening here so the the point of having K sorry the point of having K here let's focus on this K and look what it is used here okay now L I of K basically what we want we want to have the solution in this case here we return L I S of a from i to n minus 1, where every element in the LIS is larger than k. This is why at the beginning we start with minus infinity, because we really don't want any, any boundary on that. But now here, what is the point of checking if ai is greater than k? If ai is greater than k, then I need to, to look for a solution. I need to look for a solution that can involve i. Okay. So here what we have is this, is, this here is a solution that doesn't involve i. This is a solution that doesn't involve i. This is a solution that involves i. And I'm asking now at this point here, is the solution that involves i longer, it has more indices in it than the solution that doesn't or not? If it is, now we take L to be the solution that involves i. But when we take i as part of the solution, then every element in the solution, now that we have taken i, must be greater than a i. Okay? So this is the recursive implementation of this algorithm. If you run this algorithm here, you will see that this will take exponential time, okay? This will take exponential time. And this is again where we need to think about, can we do better than this? So where, where is the, the, the problem here? Is that if I think about this, these three parameters to LISL helper minus infinity, and then the A0 to N minus one and so on, N0, and you think about the recursive calls here, you will see, for example, if you look at this recursive algorithm and you take A to B, let's say, 3, 9, 12, 5, okay? And the solution should be 3, 9, 12 here. So then if this is A, then we first we call it on minus infinity A and we have 0. Then this LIS helper is going to be called on minus infinity, A, and 1. 
and it's going to be called on minus infinity, sorry, not minus infinity. The first element in that array here is going to be called on three. Okay, so these are the three parameters passed to LIS, LIS helper, three, A, and one. This one now is going to be called on minus infinity A and two. And this one is going to be now called on what happens if, if we ignore the first element and the solution doesn't in, include the first element. So now it's the second one, nine A and two. This one here is going to be three A two. And the other one is going to be the nine A two and so on. These are going to be the LISA helper calls. And you already see, you already see that where the overlap is, okay? So you see now there is an overlap in these calls, and we want to do a better implementation of this. So this is why this algorithm will end up being on the order of two. If we implement it like this, as I just wrote it above, this will take on the order of two to the n, okay? Now, can we do better? The answer is yes. Now we have to think about, about this, uh, you know, what is it that we want to store and how do we compute these values that we want to store, okay? So now this is where dynamic programming comes into the picture and I want to now define, ma define the matrix M, okay? I want to define the matrix M where M I J, what this value is going to be, the length, the length as in the number of indices of the longest increasing subsequence, the longest increase of, of A from J to N, okay? Notice that N is not, sorry, N is not part of the, the, the indexing here. MIJ is the length of the LIS of A from J to N such that, such that all elements in the aisle in the longest increasing subsequence are larger than ai okay so the length of the lis of of G, from j to to n such that all the elements in the lis are larger than ai because this one i can append to them ai because they are larger than ai so i can make i can add ai to them and they become it becomes even longer okay so if if we know this no look, if look how i define it where is the optimal solution remember that i want to find the lis on the entire in the entire array so what values do i set for i and j if you think about it carefully the n doesn't show up there it is in zero one because what does this mean it is the length of the lis of a one to n here Okay, uh, one to n such that all elements in the LIS are larger than AI. Now, one thing that what happens here from one to n, why not all of a sudden one to, to zero to n minus one? Remember in the recursive call, I use the minus infinity. So since I use the minus infinity, we need to use it here. But how do I use it? If you give me a, if you give me this a here, and again, it has three, nine, twelve, five. I will turn it into another matrix. I will push everything to the right and I put the minus infinity first here, okay? So this is now the, the array I will be dealing with. I want the minus infinity there. It's easier when we write the algorithm, okay? It does, it's not necessary that we cannot do an algorithm without it, but it is cleaner when we write the algorithm like this because now I can compare to an element in the array and not have special cases. Okay, so if the array now from is like this, this used to be from zero to n minus one. Now I'm looking for a solution from one to n here. So m of zero one is the length of the LIS of a one to n, one to n here, such that all the elements are larger than a i, but a zero is minus infinity. In other words, larger than minus infinity. Okay, so I'm looking for the length of LIS from one to n or from zero to n minus one in the original matrix and if i do this now if we look at this definition here actually let's let's keep this definition here but let me erase these okay so mij is the one i'm looking for 
So if I have this definition, then mij, now this is where the m, mij is now the max, is going to be the main one is going to be the max of m i j plus one okay so this is where j is not part of the solution j is not part of the solution or if j is part of the solution then it's one plus the m of j and j plus one if j is part of the solution now this a j now starts playing a role that we are looking for a solution where all the elements are greater than j okay so that yeah so yeah so we have this says that j is not part of the solution this one here says j is part of the solution okay if it is part of a solution, it's already contributing one to the solution. It's contributing one index. And now we are looking for indices from j plus one to n, such that the values are greater than a of j. But we can, this, this is a solution, but this, what happens if a i is greater than or equal to a, to a j? Okay, so if a i is greater than or equal to a j, then j cannot be part of the solution. So here, for this to happen, here, a i must be smaller than a j. Okay. If a i is greater than or equal to a j, then we there is no there is no way for us to take a max of two values. We cannot actually take j as part of a solution. So it has to be it has to be m of i of j plus one. Okay. Of course, if j is greater than n, then there's nothing to, to, to consider, okay? So these are three mutually exclusive conditions here, okay? So either j is greater than n, that's the first thing we, we, we check. If j is greater than n, then it is zero. If j is smaller than or equal to n, we check is, is, a, is a j greater than, or, is a i greater than or equal to a j? If it is, then mij equals mij plus one. If ai is smaller than a of j, then we take the max. Okay, so it's one of these three values depending on these three conditions on the right. Okay, now I'm not gonna put now the the full uh, algorithm. I'm not gonna write the pseudo code. But for us, the initialization starts by initializing m of i and n plus one to zero for every i between 0 and n here, okay? So this is how we initialize it. And then the, when we compute mij, notice that we have to go down from n to, to 1. So this is going to be for j equal n down to 1 and for i equals 0 to j minus 1. Now we check these conditions. If a i is greater than or equal to a j, we again, that's the, the easy case there, the m i j is nothing but m i j plus 1. Else, it's that max, the m i j is the max Okay, I ended up writing actually the pseudo code, even though I said I'm not gonna write it. But this is the m i j plus one, or one plus m j j plus one. Okay. So this is the initialization here, and then we have this loop, and at the end we return m of 0 1 and this will be m of 0 1 is the length of the longest increasing subsequence from this okay so this is the pseudo code for dynamic programming and if you look at this the running time of this algorithm is all of n squared because all we are doing is just looping over n from n to from n to 1 and the i is from 0 to j minus 1 so in the worst case this is an n squared algorithm and this 
again, this replaces a recursive algorithm that took exponential amount of time. Okay, again, please keep in mind what is it that we want to define. In this case, we define this mij, mij, to be the solution to the problem from j all the way to n, such that the elements are greater than a of i, and this basically tells us that we are interested in m of zero one. Then we need to think about the recursive formula for that, which was this one here, this recursive formula. Again, this we have the 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 basic the, the simple case. If j is greater than n, then you are operating outside the array. The the answer should be zero, and then we have two possible cases. If if j cannot be part of the solution, then return mi comma j plus one. If j can be part of the solution, we cannot force it to be there. Now we have to evaluate the, the two possibilities. When it is part of the solution, like here, and when it is not part of the solution, and we take the max of these two. And once you have once you define this, you have to write these loops carefully so that when you are computing m of i j, the values you need have already been computed. So look, if we want m of i j, we will need to make use of m of j plus 1. We need to make use of j plus 1, right? This is why the j has to go down from n to 1. We cannot go from 1 to n, because if I'm looking from 1 to n when I want what is m of i 2, I need m of i 3, but m of i 3 hasn't been calculated. If I go down from n to 1, I can achieve this. I, as, as we said before, I go back to the issue of this algorithm is not going to give me the list of indices. This is going to give me the number of indices in the longest increasing subsequence. How do I get the, the, the list of indices themselves? Using the traceback. So using the traceback, I, I start from M01. I look at M01 here. Okay. M01, remember that it is coming as a max between some M02 or 1 plus M02, okay? So M, M12 here. So in this case here, we are saying that it's either the, the element, the first element is part of the solution or the first element part of the solution or not part of the solution. We see which one of these two values gave rise to this m01 if it was this one here then we do not include uh, we we do not include j as part of a solution and if it's this we include it okay maybe i said something reversed here okay if it, this case here this case corresponds to the part that the first index index one is not part of the solution this this is not part of solution this is the index one is part of the solution so we choose which one of these give us M01. If it's this one, then add the index to the solution. If it's this one, don't add the, don't add the index to the solution and move to M of 02 and so on. Okay. And this is the algorithm for longest increasing subsequence.